CNN reporting that Trump campaign aides did review at least some of the jokes that the comedian there planned to tell and that they did flag one that called Vice President Kamala Harris the C word. They said it was, quote, in poor taste and they nixed it from the set. All this comes as the New York Times writes overnight that Harris campaign aides are growing more bullish on her chances of winning the election. Writing this, quote, Ms. Harris's aides believe the argument tying Mr. Trump to fascism is helping her sway moderate Republicans, even though the leading super PAC supporting her bid has raised worries that it's not the Democrats' most effective message. So perhaps that's why, just one week out from Election Day and with polls continuing to show a deadlocked race, the former president felt the need to say this. They use that word freely, both words. They use it, he's Hitler. And then they say, he's a Nazi. I'm not a Nazi. I'm the opposite of a Nazi. I don't know. Joining us now to discuss Alex Thompson, CNN political analyst, national political reporter for Axios, Philippe Reines, former advisor to Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign, and Mike Dubke, former Trump White House communications advisor. Welcome to all of you. One week to Election Day. Who would like to take the Nazi issue? <laughs> Should I do it? Is that a trick question? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't know what the opposite of a Nazi is, um, but you know, with the look, Mike and I have planned these kind of events. You guys have covered these kind of events. You are asking for it if you put it someplace in a venue like that. It is not like they suddenly stumble into ancient burial ground. You pick the venue knowing the history. You pick the uh, people who were speaking knowing what they have said in their history. You've given them the open mic and then you say, oh my gosh, I can't believe they said it. I don't, I don't agree with that joke. Whether it's a joke or not, whether they were, it was in the teleprompter or not, really isn't the point. If you have an open mic and you invite Eddie Murphy and it's suddenly profanity laced, you can't say, <laughs> oh my God, I mean, how did that happen? And what is the point of it? it what, is, what is the point of it? That is not what they need being discussed. And it's not just on you know, what they will call the liberal media. This is what's being discussed on Fox and on the right. This is with a week left, thank God it's only a week left. You, you don't want that. That is not a closing argument. He can say whatever he wanted later on. It doesn't matter. It wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth the risk. Well, there, Every, well go there, ahead. I, I was going to say, there's a, a question of whether or not this is intentional, to your point, to try to rally the uglier parts of the base, or this is just sloppiness and a, a consequence of arrogance on the behalf of the Trump campaign. There's base, no other way to rally that part of the base? Well, so you, you mentioned what the discussions on, uh, you know, more right wing uh, outlets, uh, even Megyn Kelly, of course, formerly of Fox News, uh, had this to say about the Madison Square Garden rally uh, earlier this week. Watch. It was too brotastic. OK, it was. You're trying to win an election in which you're hemorrhaging female voters. Maybe when you present in front of hundreds, thousands, at least at Madison Square Garden, you clean up the bro talk just a little so you don't alienate women in the middle of America who are already on the fence about Republicans. We're trying to get him elected. We don't need to rally the base or guys anymore. <laughs> Mike, is she right? <laughs> She's right. Look, the last 10 days of an election, last week of an election, it's do no harm. That's generally what you're trying to do, and I think to your, to your point. So I understand why they did Madison Square Garden. I think it had more to do with the president, uh, with President Trump's desire to be at Madison Square Garden than that anything what else. about with Trump? It, it, it is to a certain extent, but like this, is also, this, is also where, this is also where the campaign should step in and say, okay, we're going to control this environment because you don't have 10 days out, nine days out. You don't have the ability to right the ship after that. Now, I don't think that this is fatal, but I think Megyn Kelly is absolutely correct. Let's be smart in the last 10 days. That's what I heard her say. So speaking of bros, Alex, Joe Rogan is actually apparently the person who recommended to the campaign back in August that they use this comedian. Watch this. From, this is from August. It would behoove him to hire a few great comics to just tour with them and just write oh one-liners about all these different f***ing people. I mean... If he could remember them, I mean, oh I, think, I know God. he likes to go off his own head, but sure. if he could remember a few Hinchcliffe bangers, <laughs> if he hires Hinchcliffe to take him on the road... <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how f***ing insane that would be? Yeah.
Well, you know what? It turned out to be pretty f insane. <laughs> I, like, Joe Rogan and that, that comedian are actually fairly close, and he promotes him often. Uh, and, and so there is this feeling that it was a little bit of a quid quo pro with, like, you know, Joe Rogan finally had Trump on his podcast. Then they included this, this comedian. This is something that's going around in the Trump circles about how this happened. That being said, you know, I was you talking to they're not taking responsibility for being their own choice? I know it's shocking that someone on a campaign would not take responsibility. <laughs> he just wandered for out on choice. stage. Yeah. <laughs> there was no, no one knew who he was. I, I, I was talking to somebody uh, who's involved in the campaign. This is basically what they, they said about it is that they, the Trump campaign is both confident and arrogant. And that you know the the main pollster Tony Fabrizio basically has Trump's numbers ahead in all seven swing states, but within the margin of error. And as a result, they are basically feeling uh, arrogant to the point of hubris. And they, that's how you get mistakes, where all the headlines are about this comedian who is literally the first speaker of the entire eight hours I spend in Madison Square Garden <laughs> on Sunday. Um, but now we're all talking about that this speaker because of his crude and racist jokes. Right. And again, really I mean, there are Knicks games and Rangers there, and you know the circus is there. It doesn't inherently make the circus, you know, a Nazi gathering of elephants. It's how you put it together. And they, you know, they put it together this way, and that's the thing. I mean, there are times I say something that I offend someone, and yes, sometimes I think, okay, we're living in a world where I've known you long enough. Every to, now and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. to confirm, every now <laughs> there are a lot of emails out there on the internet. And sometimes yeah. I think, okay, we're living in a woke society, but I'll go along with it. Sometimes I honestly, you know, realize I shouldn't say it, and then I don't. And this was a slow moving. It's almost the opposite. It's like, oh, MSM, you know, Mass Square Garden triggers them, all the better. But if they really think that this is great, I would, I'll would i chip in on renting the venue every night for the at, next seven days. At the end of the day, the Trump campaign is focused on turning out the base and finding voters that don't normally vote to come out, and, and especially in these seven states. That's their goal. So I understand where they were coming from by doing a, as it was put, a brotastic uh, rally, but it was too far. And again, this is one of those things. The hubris, that's what you've got to run scared at this point. Alex, the Times story has generated a lot of discussion among, you know, kind of my sources because there seems to be a little bit of a, a divide on where things stand in the Harris camp. I'm just curious where your reporting lines up yeah. in terms of them coming out and saying, you know, the Times reporting that people inside the Harris camp are more bullish than they were. Yeah, there is this sort of subtle cold war between the super PAC, which is spent for, which is paid for most of the ads. Uh, future forward and the actual Harris campaign over the final message, which is also not an ideal way to go into the final 10 days with right. the future, with them basically planting subtle stories about what you should be focusing on. If you look at the ads, Future Forward is much more focused on an economic populist message, framing Trump as a billionaire who's going to give tax cuts to other billionaires. If you look at the he's Harris, out for himself, he's not out for you. Yes, exactly. If yeah. you look at the Harris campaign, both paid advertising and earned media. It is much more focused on Trump being a bad person, being a potential fascist, you know, going to take control. And, it, and it, so there is a real divergence in terms of Democratic strategy going to the final stretch.